in the name of Jesus. From today, you will move from failure to supernatural success by the power and the blood of Jesus. Every prince of Persia that is blocking your angel of blessing, even as you join this prayer meeting this afternoon, shall be scattered by the power and the blood of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, as you join this prayer meeting today, the wicked serpent in your father's house that is biting your destiny shall be electrocuted by the thunder fire of the living God. Shall be electrocuted by the thunder fire of the living God. In the name of Jesus, as you join this prayer meeting this afternoon, every covenant that is working against you shall break by fire. 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 In the name of Jesus, every curse that is following you about shall be destroyed today by the power and the blood of Jesus. I don't care what the devil thinks. I don't care whether the devil likes it or not. Your life is moving forward today by the power and the blood of Jesus. Father, in every contrary gathering, we command to scatter in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. To you be all the glory. For in Jesus' name we pray. Even as we join this how our this hour of deliverance power program, I soak you in the blood of Jesus. Every sin in your life, every sin in my life, every iniquity in your life, every transgression in your life, every iniquity in my life, every transgression in my life that can stand in the way of what God will do in this. This afternoon, let the blood of Jesus begin to wash them away. Let the blood of Jesus begin to wash them away. Let the blood of Jesus begin to wash them away. In the name of Jesus, somebody is listening to the voice, to the sound of my voice this afternoon. The blood of Jesus will fight for you on this prayer mountain this afternoon. In the name of Jesus, Chika Unam, you are welcome. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. In the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus will fight for you on this prayer mountain this afternoon by the power in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we pray to the glory of the living God. We are looking at a topic, praise the Lord, that concerns everyone, every family, every community, every nation, the whole nations of the world today. Praise the Lord. We are looking at the topic, the unguarded hour. The unguarded hour. Praise the Lord. The most dangerous hour in the life of any man or any woman. The hour in your life that is unguarded, that is spiritually unguarded, is the most dangerous hour in your life. I want you to pray this prayer. Say, powers attacking my destiny at my unguarded hour. Die in the name of Jesus. Powers attacking my destiny, attacking my wife's destiny, attacking my children's destinies at our unguarded hour. Die, 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 die. Jesus, any power anywhere, any power in my father's house, any power in my mother's house, any power in my lost house, any power in my place of birth, any power in this land that is attacking me, that is attacking my wife, that is attacking my children at our unguarded hour. I command you to die. 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 In the name of Jesus, every power attacking me, attacking my family, attacking my ministry, attacking my calling, attacking my business, attacking my investment, attacking my finances at my unguarded hour. I say die. I say die. I say die. I say die. For in Jesus' name we pray. The enemy is very wise. When the enemy wants to attack a man or a woman, he doesn't go for them when they are very strong. He doesn't go for them when he knows that they are at their very best. The enemy only goes to attack a man or a woman 
at their most vulnerable. The enemy goes to attack a man or a woman when the spiritual security around that man or woman is weak or has gone to sleep. Somebody is looking at me now. Say, powers attacking my spiritual security. Die in the name of Jesus. Any power in the heavens, any power on the earth, any power under the earth, any power in the sea, attacking my spiritual security. That by fire, 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 that by fire. For in Jesus' name we pray. You can afford not to have a physical security. But you cannot afford not to have spiritual security. Because what is spiritual security? It is security that is spiritual. It is security that consists of holy angels, the spirit of God, amen, the blood of Jesus, the wall of fire, amen, of God that is around you. Amen. That the enemy in the spirit realm cannot penetrate. Praise the Lord. If you don't have physical police, physical soldier guarding you, that's not a problem. But when angels are not guarding you, when your guardian angels are asleep or they are awake or they are, they are weak, then you are in trouble. Amen. You are going to pray that day. Say, powers! Attacking my guardian angels. Hear the judgment of the Lord. That, 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 that. In the name of Jesus, powers attacking my guardian angel die in the name of Jesus. Listen very well. The coronavirus that is spreading all over the world right now, it came at the unguarded hour. It came when nobody was expecting it. It came when nobody was prepared for it. It came when it knows that it can really not be stopped. They don't have the apparatus to stop him. The same thing in the spirit realm. Praise the Lord. I say the major problem of mankind, most especially Christians, is the problem of the unguarded hour. A lot of destinies have been turned upside down today. Because of the unguarded hour. Because the unguarded hour is that hour that the enemy knows that all your security has disappeared. All your defense is gone. And they come in at that point to attack. Praise the Lord. Let us look at the Bible. In Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. From verse I'm um, sorry, Matthew chapter 13. From Matthew chapter 13, from verse 24 to 30. Matthew 13, 24 to 30. Ah, somebody is hearing the sound of my voice. I want you to pray like this. Say, powers attacking my spiritual defense. Die in the name of Jesus. Powers attacking my spiritual defense. Die, 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 die. In the name of Jesus. If they are not able to attack your spiritual defense, then they are not able to touch your destiny. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 30. Another parable put he forth unto them. This was Jesus saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But white men slept, his enemies came and so tars among the wheat and went his way. You are going to shout this prayer. Say, powers attacking my good seeds. Powers attacking my 
my good seeds. Die in the name of Jesus. Powers attacking my good seeds. Die, 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 in the name of Jesus. You are always planting good seeds. You are always trying to do good things. You are welcome, Sister Caroline Wood. God bless you, man. You are welcome, Sister Insenewa, Victoria. Praise the Lord. You are every time you try to plant good things, but the enemy comes to replace it with a bad thing. Amen. Somebody is here. I want you to pray. Say, powers attacking what I am gathering. Powers scattering what I am gathering. Powers scattering what I am gathering. Your end has come. Die in the name of Jesus. Every power that is scattering what I'm gathering, I command you to die. 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 In the name of Jesus, every power that is scattering what I'm gathering, I command you to die. I command you to die. I command you to die. For in Jesus' name we pray. You can see. The Bible says, it said, the man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tars among the wheat and went his way. He had planted good seed. But the enemy came to plant bad seed. Say, powers! Planting bad seeds in the garden of my life. Die! In the name of Jesus. Powers planting bad seeds in the garden of my life. Die in the name of Jesus. Powers planting bad seeds in the garden of my life. In the garden of my wife's life. In the garden of my children's life. I command you to die. 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 In the name of Jesus. Somebody is here. I thank God that you are on this mountain this afternoon. You are always trying to plant good things. But you end up with bad things. You are trying to succeed. Every effort you make, you are always failing. Praise the Lord. Princess Nimi Okiribwe, you are welcome. My our mommy, Omotone Jayola, you are welcome. Praise the Lord. There is a power that is planting bad seeds, evil seeds, even when you try to plant good seeds, they shall be wasted by thunder in the name of Jesus. They shall be wasted by thunder in the name of Jesus. What does that mean? They are wasting your effort. The man sowed good seeds. The enemy came and sowed bad seeds. What is the enemy trying to do? The enemy is trying to waste his efforts. You are going to pray like this. Say, Powers wasting my efforts. Your end has come. Die in the name of Jesus. 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 Powers wasting my efforts. Wasting my wife's efforts. Wasting my children's efforts. Your end has come. Die in the name of Jesus. Die in the name of Jesus. Die in the name of Jesus. But they are only able to do that when the man slept. Hallelujah. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tars also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then had it stars. Amen. Ah, you are going to pray that somebody, there's a sister here. I bless God that you are here. Say, every evil hand planting failure in my life. Every evil hand planting failure in my life. Wither, die. Wither, die. Wither, die. Wither, die. Wither, die. Wither, die, wither, die in the name of Jesus. Every who had planting failure in my life, 
planting failure in my wife's life, planting failure in my children's life, planting failure in my ministry, planting failure in my calling, planting failure in my business, planting failure in my investments, planting failure in my finances, planting failure in my health. I say, wither and die, wither and die, wither and die in the name of Jesus. Do you know how many times that a man or a woman will actually set out and plant good things and establish good projects and establish good business, but some wicked hands will now go and plant failure inside what they have planted. This is the reason why you cannot afford to have an unguarded hour as a Christian, because the enemy is watching you, watching you very closely. They are using their CCTV monitor to monitor you, to monitor where you are going to be weak, where you are going to be tired, where you are going to sleep, spiritually sleep, so that they can destroy what you are doing. Any power planning to destroy what you are doing right now, any power that is trying to destroy the project that you are having right now, let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn them to ashes in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn them to ashes in the name of Jesus. As a Christian, you cannot afford to have an unguarded hour. Praise the Lord. You are welcome, Sister Ikeme Stella Ifioma. You are welcome, Sister Adebola Ayileka Ademuiwa. You are welcome, Sister Nena Walter. Don't worry. The project that heaven has placed in your hands, any power that tries to destroy that project from today shall be buried alive in the name of Jesus. Shall be buried alive in the name of Jesus. Shall be buried alive in the name of Jesus. Beloved, unguarded hour is very dangerous. That is when the enemy destroys a lot of things in the lives of a lot of people. Praise the Lord. I am still reading Matthew chapter 13. Amen. From verse 28 now. He said unto them, An enemy had done this. Of course, it must be an enemy. <laughs> when you are trying to show good things, and they are sowing bad things. You are trying to plan success. And they are, they are sowing failure for you. That can only be an enemy. Any, I pray for somebody on this line. Any power in your father's house. Any power in your mother's house. Any power in your in-law's house. Any power in your place of birth. That is always destroying the good things in your life. I command them to fall down and die. In the name of Jesus. I command them to fall down and die. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus name we pray. The servant said unto him. Without them that we go and gather them up. But he said, Nay! Lest while you gather up the test, you, you root up also the wheat with them. That was what the enemy wanted. The enemy wanted the situation where you are going to be ignorant. Spiritually ignorant. And you are going to be using your own hands to destroy what you have planted by yourself. Somebody is listening to the sound of my voice. Say, any power that wants me to use my own hand to scatter my own life, to scatter my own destiny, you are a liar. Fall down and die. You are a liar. Fall down and die. You are a liar. Fall down and die. In the name of Jesus, any power that wants me to use my own hand to destroy what I have been building, to scatter what I have been gathering, I command you to fall down and die. I command you to fall down and die. I command you to fall down and die. In the name of Jesus. This is how a lot of people, the enemy has influenced them to use their own hands to destroy their own destinies. You can see the good man sowed good seed in his field. The enemy came and sowed tars. The servants of the good man, they said, oh, master, let us go and remove the tars. They said, no, if you do that now, you are going to destroy a lot of things. Let them grow together. Praise the Lord. I pray for somebody right now. Every evil growth in your life, I command it to die 
in the name of Jesus. Every evil growth in your life, I command it to die in the name of Jesus. Every evil growth in your life, in your wife's life, in your husband's life, in your children's life, I say die by the power in the blood of Jesus. I say die by the power in the blood of Jesus. I say die by the power in the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let both grow together until the harvest. That's what the good man said. He said, let both grow together until the harvest. Praise the Lord. Amen. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tars and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Somebody is here right now, I want you to shout. The Bible says, every tree that my father has not planted shall be rooted out and shall be cast into fire. You are going to pray like this. Every satanic plantation in my life, I root you out. I set you on fire in the name of Jesus. Every satanic plantation in my life, in my wife's life, in my children's lives, in my marriage, in my home, in my business, in my career, in my finances, in my investments, I root you out. I set you on fire. I root you out. I set you on fire. I root you out. I set you on fire. I root you out. I set you on fire. I root you out. I set you on fire. In the name of Jesus. The problems you have today, those problems you are not seeing today, this is how they came into your life. They came in at the unguarded hour. When you least expected them, when you were not expecting them at all, nobody was expecting COVID-19. COVID-19. Nobody was expecting it. With no corona. But this is another strand. Nobody expected it. And you can see the damage, the havoc that it is committing right now. That is how it happens. When an enemy enters at the unguarded hour. Because you are not prepared. Praise the Lord. I say from the scripture we have just read. We can see the story of a man that sowed good seed in his field. Ha! Say, oh Lord. Empower me from today to sow good seeds in the garden of my life. In the name of Jesus, I receive the supernatural empowerment. My wife and my children receive the supernatural empowerment to sow good seeds in the garden of our lives, in the fields of our lives, in the name of Jesus. And any power that tries to replace our good seed with bad seed, that tries to replace our wheat with our time, with tasks, shall be destroyed. They shall be destroyed. They shall be destroyed. They shall be destroyed. They shall be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. So when you are talking about witchcraft operations, that is an example that you have seen. When witches and wizards, when they want to be wicked to a man, when they want to be wicked to a woman, every good thing that he has planted, they will go and plant bad things, counterfeit things there. So that what he has planted, so that what she has planted can be destroyed. Praise the Lord. I pray again. Any power destroying good things in your life shall be wasted by thunder in the name of Jesus. Any power, every power that is destroying good things in your life shall be wasted by fire, shall be wasted by thunder, shall be wasted by fire, shall be wasted by thunder in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Sister Grace, Ayekuru, you are welcome. Sister Titila, Mary Akinyemi, you are welcome. The Lord will bless you mightily on this virtual prayer mountain this afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus. I said this man acquired a field and sowed good seed in his field. This is the story of your life. There is no man that is going to acquire field and go and sow bad seed there. That will go and plant a seed that will not bring bumper harvest. That will go and plant a seed that will die before harvest. Nobody does that. This is your life. We are talking about the garden of your life. 
And today, heaven will water the garden of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. As from today, your, your, the garden of your life will begin to bring fruit in due season in the name of Jesus. As from today, the garden of your life will no longer experience drought in the name of Jesus. The garden of your life will no longer experience famine in the name of Jesus. From today, you begin to experience bumper harvest in the garden of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. While he was awake, and plowing the field and planting the seeds. The enemy did not dare come near him nor the field. When the man did not sleep, when the man was clearing the field, when the man was plowing the field, when the man was planting the field, the enemy did not come. I pray for somebody here. Every enemy that is always waiting for you Amen. To put a lot of effort in what you are doing. And after you have put the effort, they will now come and destroy your effort. Wherever such enemy are, I command them to be buried alive in the order of Dathan, Koran, and Abiram. In the name of Jesus, anyone in your father's house, anyone in your mother's house, anyone in your in-law's house, anyone in your place of birth that is always waiting for you to put all the effort, to, to, to do all the work, to do everything you want to do. You have suffered, you have toiled, and when you are suffering, when you are toiling, they do not come near you. But after you have done that, when you are waiting for harvest, they now come and destroy your harvest. They shall be destroyed. They shall be destroyed. They shall be destroyed. They shall be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, I pray for a particular brother on this prayer line today. Any power destroying your harvest shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Any power destroying your harvest shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Any power destroying your harvest shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Unguarded hour is dangerous. It is an hour when the destiny of a man is shut down. It is an hour when the harvest of a man or a woman is destroyed. It is an, it is an hour, praise the Lord, when all the effort that a man or a woman has ever put in a project in order for them to achieve success is wasted. Ah, a sister is here. I'm praying for you again. Your efforts shall no longer be wasted in the name of Jesus. Your efforts shall no longer be wasted in the name of Jesus. Your efforts shall no longer be wasted in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I say, meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, that as long as a man or a woman is awake and at a lot, nobody can go near what belongs to them. Because if they do, amen, there will be a very serious resistance. And such enemies may meet their waterloo or defeat. When you are awake, when you are not asleep, when you are not weak, no enemy is going to come near you. Because they know that you will give them battle for battle. Praise the Lord. They know that you will give them fire for fire. Hallelujah. There is somebody that is listening to me right now. Receive fire. Receive the fire to combat your enemies by the power in the blood of Jesus. Receive the fire to combat all your enemies in the name of Jesus. Receive the fire to combat all your enemies in the mighty name of Jesus. You need fire. You need fire. You need fire. Why? Because Hebrews 12, 29 says, God himself is a consuming fire. Praise the Lord. <laughs> if you don't have fire as a Christian, they'll finish it. God himself, your God, my God, is a consuming fire. Why is God a consuming fire? Because there are things to be consumed. The enemy has to be consumed. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. I say, when you are spiritually busy, there is no power that can, amen, there is no power that can challenge you. But the Bible says, immediately the man stopped walking, went away from the farm, 
and went to bed. The enemy came and planted what was going to attack all that he had labored for when he was awake. I pray any power attacking what you have labored for, they shall be buried alive in the name of Jesus. Any power that is attacking what you have labored for shall be buried alive, shall be buried alive, shall be buried alive, shall be buried alive in the name of Jesus. Remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We are wrestling against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness, very wicked spirits in high places. How can a man, this is your life, this is the life of a man, this is the life of a woman, this is what is going on in the spirit realm. That's the reason why you are recording those failures. That is the reason why you are recording those non-achievements. That is the reason why you are recording those breakdowns instead of breakthroughs. Because it's not that you are not putting effort. Look at the story of that man. He acquired the field, he cleared the field, he plowed the field, he planted the field. But the enemy did not want him to harvest. Any power that will not allow you to reap what you have sowed, that will not allow you to harvest what you have planted, shall be wasted by thunder in the name of Jesus. Shall be wasted by thunder in the name of Jesus. Shall be wasted by thunder in the name of Jesus. My brother, my sister, it is fire for fire. Because the enemy is desperately wicked. is wickedly wicked. Praise the Lord. A lot of people like this, that want to go into business. They put millions of dollars, millions of pounds, millions of cities, millions of francs ever, millions of naira, millions of all manner of money into their business. And the enemy waits for them to put this money into the business and waste everything. Somebody is looking at me right now. The power that has been wasting your business effort is buried right now in the name of Jesus. By the prophetic anointing of the living God upon my, my, upon my head, I declare that that power that has been wasting your business effort, that has been wasting your business effort, that has been wasting your business effort, is buried alive today. Is buried alive today. Is buried alive today. Is buried alive today. In the name of Jesus, from today, you will plant, you will harvest. You will sow, you will reap in the name of Jesus. Yes, you will begin to eat the sweat of your labor by the power in the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. I said, the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. I said, the enemy came and planted what was going to attack all that he had labored for when he was awake. For this is an excellent example of an unguarded hour. When the man was awake, when he was walking, the enemy did not come. But immediately he went to bed. The enemy came to scatter what he has done. Amen. So, number one lesson. What is an unguarded hour? Amen. Beloved, you really need to identify what an unguarded hour is. Because... Many are those whose destinies have been shut down during this particular unguarded hour. It is dangerous for you not to know what an unguarded hour is in the spirit realm. Praise the Lord. An unguarded hour, as the name implies, is therefore that hour or hours in your life when you are left vulnerable. That's the vulnerable. When, when you are spiritually vulnerable, your spiritual vulnerability. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us. It is the hour in your life when your spiritual doors are left opened without any hindrance to the enemy when they want to come in. Your unguarded hour is when your spiritual security door is left opened. And the enemy is coming in unhindered. Nobody is stopping them. No power is stopping them. You can imagine in that farm that day, the farm, the field we are talking about, 
You can imagine if that enemy met, met only angels surrounding the farm, would he have been able to enter to plant tars? This is the life of a lot of men and women. Praise the Lord. There are certain times which we refer to as the unguarded hour, when the holy angels are not, are not there. Your security spirit, your spiritual security door is opened. The enemy just comes in and does whatever they want to do, which is going to affect the life and the destiny of that man forever. Praise the Lord. The unguarded hour is that period in your life when your life is devoid of any security whatsoever. Praise the Lord. This is the period when, amen, this is the period when your guardian angel is either asleep or too weak to fight the intruders of your life. Say anything in my life that is making my guardian angel to be weak. Is sin. Whenever you commit sin, your security angels become weak. They cannot fight. If the holier you are, the stronger your guardian angels are. Why? It's not that they are not strong to fight, but the enemy, the Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren, will come to those guardian angels and say, you are still guarding this man <laughs> when he has committed sin. And I will back it up for you in the scripture. In Zechariah chapter 3 from verse 1 to 5, the Bible says, And the Lord showed me Joshua the high priest standing at the right hand of the angel of the Lord. And Satan stood there to resist him. And the angel said, The Lord rebuke you, O Satan. Is this not a branch that is plucked out of fire? Joshua the high priest was wearing a filthy garment. A security angel was standing beside him. And Satan was still able to resist him until God turned down from heaven and said, remove his filthy garment. Because if you don't remove his filthy garment, the enemy will continue to resist him. That is what I'm talking about. The unguarded hour. The time when your security is weak due to sin, due to disobedience, due to transgressions. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. I say your unguarded hour is the hour when all the spiritual robbers in your father's house. <laughs> the hour when all the spiritual robbers in your father's house, all the spiritual robbers in your mother's house, plunder your divine benefits without anyone stopping them. That is when they come to plunder your divine benefits without anyone stopping them. I want you to pray. Any spiritual robber in my father's house, any spiritual robber in my mother's house, any spiritual robber in my in-laws house, any spiritual robber in my place of birth that is plundering my divine benefits, I command you to fall down and die in the name of Jesus, that is plundering my wife's divine benefits, that is plundering my children's divine benefits, wherever you are right now, fall down and die, fall down and die, fall down and die, in the name of Jesus. It is at these uncarded hours that spiritual robbers invade the life of a man and they plunder their destiny, they plunder their virtues, they plunder their potentials. They cut away with every good thing in the life of that man or woman. You can see why it is dangerous for you to entertain unguarded hour at any time of your life. One minute, if not even one second, is enough for the enemy to steal everything that you have in your life. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. I said this is the hour when most lives are emptied and destinies paralyzed. This is the hour, the unguarded hour, when most lives are, you know, vandalized, when most lives are emptied, when most lives are paralyzed. Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The unguarded hour is also the period when evil personalities plant afflictions in the bodies of men and women. That is the hour when evil planters plant afflictions in the bodies of men and women. Just like that enemy went into that farm to plant tiles. 
Some powers actually come at your unguarded hour to plant cancer, to plant diabetes, to plant all manner of terminal illnesses. That is when they do it. Praise the Lord. The, it is also the hour when spiritual robbers steal babies from their mother's womb. Some women, they say, oh, I cannot conceive, or I'm conceiving, but the baby is disappearing. Your unguarded hour. That is the time they are coming to stop your fruitfulness. I pray for a sister looking at me right now. Every power attacking your fruitfulness shall be wasted in the name of Jesus. Every power attacking your fruitfulness shall be wasted in the mighty name of Jesus. The unguarded hour is the hour when a lot of evil trade by butter takes place. Exchange of lives, exchange of destinies, exchange of virtues, exchange of potentials. They will carry a very good potential from a man and sell it and collect the terrible one from the other man and give it to the person that has the good one. Every satanic trade by butter that is going on in your life with your potentials, with your destiny, I destroy today in the name of Jesus. Every market of darkness where they are doing satanic trade by butter on your destiny, on your potentials, on your virtues, I shut them down by the power in the blood of Jesus. I shut them down by the power in the blood of Jesus. I shut them down by the power in the blood of Jesus. The unguarded hour is the hour when a lot of trade by butter is taking place. Amen. May men and women with glorious destinies are forced to trade their destinies with the worthless things of life. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Esau lost his birthright to his brother Jacob at his unguarded hour. Meaning that an unguarded hour could also be a period where a man or woman lose their spiritual senses. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Lesson number two. Amen. What are the causes of spiritual unguarded hour? What are the causes? How does it come about? Why men slept? The enemy came and sought us. What makes man to sleep spiritually? Why do they have unguarded hour? Why is a particular hour or some particular hours in the life of a man or woman unguarded? Why? What is the cause? Praise the Lord. If you look at Romans chapter 6 verse 23, the Bible says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sin is a killer. It's a security killer. It's a, it's a spirituality killer. And that is why the whole world is where we are today. We love sin more than holiness. We love sin more than righteousness. Sin is very sweet. Sin is very pleasurable. The devil made it very sweet. The devil made it very attractive. And a lot of destinies have been amputated. A lot of lives, a lot of glory have been buried due to sin, due to disobedience. Praise the Lord. I said the major cause of unguarded hour in the life of a man or a woman is sin. Sin. When we say you are spiritually asleep, what do you mean that you have, you, have, you, have, you, have, you have sinned? You have transgressed. You have committed iniquity. You have disobeyed God. You have been disconnected from God. I mean, unguarded hour is an hour when a man or woman is disconnected from God. It's as simple as that. So you can imagine when a man or woman is disconnected from God for just one second, what Satan will do. Remember Job chapter 2 from verse 1. The Bible says on a certain day when the sons of God went to present themselves before God, God himself looked at Satan and said, where have you been, Satan? He said, I've been going to and fro the surface of the earth. And God said, have you considered my servant Job a faithful man, a man of integrity, a man that's a straight evil? Uh, does Job fear you for nothing? I have been to his house. If not for your edge that was around him, I would have dealt with him. You see, that was Job's 
guarded hour. A Job's guarded hour. The enemy, Lucifer, Satan, the devil could not touch him. But what did God do? Even though Job did not sin, God was just trying to show Job, and was just trying to show Satan that no matter what you do to Job, he's still going to keep his integrity. And what did God do? God removed his guarded hour and converted it to unguarded hour. Beloved, you know the story. Everything that Job had was destroyed. The unguarded hour is a time of destruction. Physical and spiritual destruction. A lot of Christians, they have been very holy, they have been very holy, they have been very righteous, they are doing very well in their career, they are doing very well in their business. The moment they go and commit immorality, their guarded hour becomes unguarded hour. And the enemy now ruins everything that they have built. Somebody is hearing the sound of my voice. That is, his, that is your story. But the Lord said I should tell you he has forgiven you. That you will rise up again. According to Micah chapter 7 verse 8. He said rejoice not over me O my enemy. He said if I fall down I shall rise up again. If I sit in darkness. He said the Lord shall be a light unto me. That is the message of God for you. You that person that is listening to me. You made a mistake and everything was ruined. You, 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 but you allow the enemy to lead you, to lure you into an unguarded hour. And the enemy came and scattered everything that you have. But don't worry. Don't worry. You are coming up again by the power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. I say because it is sin that can cause the door keepers of a man or woman's life to either fall asleep or to be too weak to defend the doors of their lives. When you sin, your spiritual dog keepers, they either fall asleep or they are too weak to keep the dog. Praise the Lord. Sin is a very terrible spiritual substance that paralyzes all spiritual defenses. It's a very terrible spiritual substance that paralyzes all spiritual defenses. Don't play with sin. It is death. Spiritual death. And spiritual death will bring spiritual calamity. Spiritual death will bring spiritual disaster. Yes. And that is what is happening to a lot of people. A little sin. A little leaven that leveled all. The little foxes that destroyed the whole vine. Don't play with sin. Especially when you know that you are a child of destiny. Joseph knew that he was a child of destiny. He, he had his guarded hour all the time. But the enemy was trying to create an unguarded hour around Joseph. But thank God for the mercy of God. The very day the enemy was going to hatch that plan to get Joseph, Joseph ran away. The Bible says, flee from all appearances of evil. It is for your own good. Because if you don't flee, that little sin you commit can cost you a lifetime damage. And a lot of destinies have had lifetime damages because of a little sin. Just a little sin. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. I say, no matter how anointed or spiritually strong a man or a woman may be, sin can destroy the defenses they have built over the years. Praise the Lord. In a matter of seconds, that you are anointed. I'm anointed. I carry anointed. I carry fire. Sin is a deflator. Sin is a spiritual killer. No matter how anointed you may be, if you like, be God's second in command. Be the two I see of God. The moment you sin, amen, unguarded hour will be created around you and the enemy will bombard you with terrible afflictions. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So finally, you know it. How can you stay spiritually guarded? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I said, just like the story of that man that sowed good seed in his field and while he slept, the enemy came and sowed tasks. I said, beloved, the secret of staying spiritually guarded is to be spiritually awake all the time. You have to be spiritually alert. You cannot sleep. 
The Bible says, He that watches over Israel, neither sleep nor slumber. Why don't you imagine, just imagine it this way, that God sleeps for one second. What will happen to the whole earth? If God sleeps for one second, one second. Meanwhile, you will spiritually sleep and be snoring. Praise the Lord. That's the reason why the enemy has been plotting. When I say spiritually awake, it doesn't mean that you should stay awake physically. It just means that you must be living a holy life consistently, 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 consistent. That is what spiritual, to be spiritually awake, that's what it means. Praise the Lord. Meaning that you must be spiritually alert at all times. Your prayer life, your worship life, your Bible study time must be very active and above all, you must do everything possible to stay away from sin. When you give your life to Christ, become a worshiper of Christ. A lot of Christians are not worshippers of Jesus. They are just Christians by mouth. And that is why they are suffering from the consequences of unguarded hour. When you stay with Jesus, and he that watches over Israel is watching over you, you can never have an unguarded hour. Because unguarded hour is an hour that is not guarded. You cannot be with God. You cannot be in the presence of God. And you will experience unguarded hour. That is what this message is all about. That you should be with God all the time. Give your life to Christ. Be spirit filled. Be prayerful. A lot of people dread prayers. I, I don't think they even understand what prayer is. Prayer is just talking to God. The way I'm talking to you now. Sometimes you don't need to go and kneel down. To, you can just, as you are walking, oh Lord, my Father, I just want to bless you. You are praying. The moment you are acknowledging and you say, Lord, you are the one I'm talking to. That's what prayer is all about. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. Praise the Lord. I say sin is the enemy of every child of God. Sin is the enemy of every child of God. Praise the Lord. And that is the weapon the enemy uses when he wants to plunder the life of any child of of God. If you can run away from sin, you will enjoy your life for the rest of your life. If you can run away from sin, if you can do away with iniquity, you can do away with transgression, you can do away with disobedience, disobedience to the word of God. I, I, I want you to be disobedient sometimes when you don't even know the word of God. You only know what to do when you have read the word, you have meditated on the word. You know what the word says. Satan went to Jesus. Thank God that Jesus is the word. And Jesus answered him back. Satan will be telling you things that are not scriptural. Things that are not in the Bible. And you say, oh, I had it in my spirit and you went to do it. You are doomed. Because the enemy wants to destroy you. All the enemy is just trying to do is to create an unguarded hour around you so that they can fire their arrow. Psalm 11 verse 2. He said the wicked made ready his bow. Amen. Bend his bow and made ready his arrow to shoot privately at the upright at heart. The enemy is always watching you. The enemy knows your guarded hour. Satan knew the guarded hour of Job. He even went there. Maybe he will succeed. But he didn't succeed. Until an opportunity was given to him. When God decided not to guard Job. May you never suffer from the consequences of unguarded hour. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I read the last scripture for today. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 14 to 16. As obedient children. As obedient children. Not fashioning yourselves according to the former lost in your ignorance, but as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Staying holy will help your destiny and keep your life intact. Staying holy will help you to have 
guarded hour all the days of your life. And I'm telling you, somebody is listening to me right now. The enemy is trying to plunder you. They are, they, are, they are luring you gradually. That's why God brought you to this meeting. So that you can hear this warning. Don't allow the enemy to push you into their trap. Because it can be, it can be very, very disastrous. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Everlasting Father, Shekinah King of Glory, I thank you, Lord God in heaven, for your children that joined this prayer meeting, the hour of deliverance power. My Father, my God, Father, continue to guard them, continue to, to protect them in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will never leave you unguarded in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not do anything that will make you to become unguarded in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for a particular sister here. Some powers have been coming to attack you in the night. You will no longer be vulnerable to those powers in the mighty name of Jesus. From today, whenever they come to you in the night to attack you, the spirit of the living God that has entered into your life in this prayer meeting will raise a standard against them in the mighty name of Jesus. They do not want you to become what God wants you to become. They are liars because no one can stop the move of God. No power will stop the move of God in your life. In the name of Jesus, you have already climbed the ladder of greatness. You will climb it to the very top in the mighty name of Jesus. And every power that is trying to destroy your ladder of greatness, I'm looking at the sister right now, any power that is trying to destroy your ladder of greatness shall be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Very soon we are going to celebrate your greatness. You are going to call me. You are going to say, Pastor Ken, the Olaji Day, what you said that day has already happened. Yes, a lot of people have called me like that in the past. And I know that you too, very soon, you are going to call me for your celebration. I am going to call you for my celebration. Father, we thank you for everything. To you, we give all the glory. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. We are um, broadcasting to you live from Mountain of Fire Miracles Ministries, Tampa, Florida. If you have any question, I see some people have written some things there. Oh, they want to pay their tithe, they want to pay their offering. I will send you the church account, Mountain of Fire Miracles Ministries, Tampa, Florida. Please put it in that account. I am and I, I, I work for Mountain of Fire. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, so to the glory of the living God, between now and I think we are meeting again on Monday now. The Lord will be with you. No evil shall befall you. You will come back with powerful testimonies, with uncommon breakthroughs in the mighty name of Jesus. And the hand of the living God, the wall of fire of the living God, the wall of angel of the living God, the wall of the presence of the living God shall protect you and every member of your household shall protect me and every member of my household from this pandemic pandemic of coronavirus and every other viruses and sicknesses and afflictions in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Take all the glory, Lord, for in Jesus' name we are prayed. Let us share the grace now. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please always remember to share this page uh, with all your contacts, with all your friends, so that they too can benefit from it. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. See you again on Monday. Amen. Seven powerful hallelujah. Let's go. Hallelujah. 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 And for all those that are typing messages here, I see them coming. And don't worry. I will reply you. I will reply those messages. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Bye. Have a glorious weekend in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you.